dear students today we will discuss on the topic marker assisted selection and crop improvement marker assisted selection or marker added selection is a process whereby a marker morphological biochemical or one based on dna or rna variation is used for indirect selection of a genetic determinant or determinants of a trait of interest that is productivity disease resistance abiotic stress tolerance or quality this process is used in plant and animal breeding considerable developments in biotechnology have led plant breeders to develop more efficient selection systems to replace traditional phenotypic pedigree based selection systems marker added selection or marker assisted selection is indirect selection process where a trait of interest is selected not based on the trait itself but on a marker linked to it for example if marker assisted selection is being used to select individuals with a disease the level of disease is not quantified but rather a marker allele which is linked with disease is used to determine disease presence the assumption is that linked allele associates with the gene or quantitative trait locus of interest marker assisted selection can be useful for traits that are difficult to measure which exhibit low heritability or are expressed let in development now let's come to the marker types a marker may be morphological first marker loci available that have obvious impact on the morphology of plant genes that affect form coloration male sterility or resistance among others have been analyzed in many plant species Examples of this type of markers may include the presence or absence of own leaf seed coloration, height, grain color, aroma of rice, etc. In well characterized crops like maize, tomato, pea, barley, or wheat, tens or even hundreds of such genes have been assigned to different chromosomes. Now let's come to the biochemical. A gene that encodes a protein that can be extracted and observed, for example, isogiants and storage proteins. Next is the cytological. The chromosomal bending produced by different strains, for example, G bending. Next is the biological. Different pathogen races or insect biotypes based on host pathogen or host parasite interaction can be used as a marker since the genetic constitution of an organism can affect its susceptibility to pathogens or parasites the last is the dna based or molecular a unique dna sequence occurring in proximity to the gene or locus of interest can be identified by a range of molecular techniques such as RFLPs, RAPDs, AFLP, DAF, SCARs, microsatellites, etc. Now let's come to the relationship between gene and marker or it can be referred to as gene versus marker. The gene of interest is directly related with production of protein that produce certain phenotypes whereas marker should not influence the trait of interest but are genetically linked and so go together during segregation of gametes during the concomitant reduction in homologous recombinations between the marker and the gene of interest in many traits genes are discovered and can be directly assayed for their presence with a high level of confidence 
However, if a gene is not isolated, marker's health is taken to tag a gene of interest. In such case, there may be some false positive results due to the recombination between marker of interest and gene or QTL. A perfect marker would elicit no false positive results. So, some of the important properties of ideal markers for marker-assisted selection are easy recognition of all possible phenotypes, homo and heterozygotes, from all different alleles, demonstrates measurable differences in expression between trait types or gene of interest alleles early in the development of the organism. It should have no effect on the trait of interest that varies depending on the allele at the marker loci. Low or null interaction among the markers allowing the use of many at the same time in a segregating population. It should be abundant in number and it should be polymorphic. To avoid problems specific to morphological markers, the DNA-based markers have been developed. They are highly polymorphic, simple inheritance, abundantly occur throughout the genome, easy and fast to detect. Minimum pleiotropic effect and detection is not dependent on the developmental stage of the organism. Numerous markers have been mapped to different chromosomes in several crops including rice, wheat, maize, soybean and several other crops. These markers have been used in diversity analysis, parentage detection, DNA fingerprinting and prediction of hybrid performance. Molecular markers are useful in indirect selection processes, enabling manual selection of individuals for further propagation. Next, we'll come to the selection for major genes linked to markers. The major genes which are responsible for economically important characteristics are frequent in the plant kingdom. Such characteristics include disease resistance, male sterility, self incompatibility, others related to shape, color, and architecture of whole plants, and are often of mono or oligogenic in nature. The marker loci, which are tightly linked to the major genes, can be used for selection and are sometimes more efficient than direct selection for the target gene. Alternately, in such cases that the target gene of interest differs between two alleles by a difficult to detect single nucleotide polymorphism, an external marker, be it another gene or a polymorphic that is easier to detect, such as a short tandem repeat, may present as the most realistic option. Now, let's see the situations that are favorable for molecular marker selection. There are several indications for the use of molecular markers in the selection of a genetic trait. The situation are, the selected character is expressed in plant development like fruit and flower features or adult characters with a juvenile period so that it is not necessary to wait for the organism to become fully developed before the arrangement can be made for propagation. The next is the expression of the target gene is recessive so that individuals which are heterozygous positive for the recessive allele can be crossed to produce some homozygous offspring with the desired trait. The next is the there is requirement for the presence of special conditions in order to invoke expression of the target gene as in the case of breathing for disease and pest resistance where inoculation with the disease or subjection to pest would otherwise be required. 
This advantage derives from the error due to unreliable inoculation methods and the fact that field inoculation with the pathogen is not allowed in many areas for safety reasons. Moreover, problems in the recognition of the environmentally unstable genes can be eluded. The next is the phenotype is affected by two or more unlinked genes. For example, selection for multiple genes which provide resistance against diseases or insect paste for gene pyramiding. The cost of genotyping of a molecular marker is reducing while the cost of phenotyping is increasing, particularly in developed countries, thus increasing the attractiveness of marker-assisted selection as the development of the technology continues. Now, let's come to the steps for marker-assisted selection. Generally, the first step is to map the gene or quantitative trait locus of interest first by using different techniques and then use this information for marker-assisted selection. Generally, the markers to be used should be close to gene of interest less than 5 recombination unit or centimogram in order to ensure that only minor fraction of the selected individuals will be recombinants. Generally, not only a single marker but rather two markers are used in order to reduce the chances of an error due to homologous recombination. For example, if two flanking markers are used at same time with an interval between them of approximately 20 cm, there is higher probability, almost 99% for recovery of the target gene. Next step is the QTL mapping techniques. In plants, QTL mapping is generally achieved using biparental cross-population, a cross between two parents which have contrasting phenotype for the threat of interest are developed. Commonly used populations are recombinant inbred lines or RILs, doubled haploids or DH, backcross and F2s. Linkage between the phenotype and markers, which have already been mapped, is tested in these populations in order to determine the position of the QTL. Such techniques are based on linkages and are therefore referred to as linkage mapping. Next is the single step marker assisted selection and QTL mapping. In contrast to two-step QTL mapping and marker-assisted selection, a single-step method for breeding typical plant populations has been developed. In such an approach, in the first few breeding cycles, markers linked to the threat of interest are identified by QTL mapping and later the same information is used in the same population. In this approach, pedigree structure are created from families that are created by crossing number of parents in three-way or four-way crosses. Both phenotyping and genotyping is done using molecular markers and map the possible location of QTL of interest. This will identify markers and their favorable alleles. Once these favorable marker alleles are identified, the frequency of such alleles will be increased and response to marker-assisted selection is estimated. Marker alleles with desirable effect will be further used in next selection cycle or other experiments. Next we'll come to the high throughput genotyping techniques. Recently, high throughput Genotyping techniques are developed which allows marker-added screening of many genotypes. This will help breeders in sifting 
traditional breathing to marker edit selection. One of example of such automation is using DNA isolation robots, capillary electrophoresis and pipetting robots. One of recent example of capillary system is Applied Biosystem 3130 Genetic Analyzer. This is the latest generation of four capillary electrophoresis instruments for the low to medium throughput laboratories. Now we'll come to the use of marker assisted selection for back cross breathing. A minimum of five or six back cross generations are required to transfer a gene of interest from a donor to a recipient. The recovery of the recurrent genotype can be accelerated with the use of molecular markers. If the F1 is heterozygous for the marker locus, individual with the recurrent parent alleles at the marker locus in first or subsequent back cross generations will also carry a chromosome tagged by the marker. Now we'll come to the marker assisted gene pyramiding. Gene pyramiding has been proposed and applied to enhance resistance to disease and insects by selecting for two or more than two genes at a time. For example, in rice, such pyramids have been developed against bacterial blight and blast. The advantage of use of markers in this case allows selecting for cutial LL linked markers that have same phenotypic effect. Now coming to the conclusion of the topic, marker assisted selection is the most widely used application of marker systems in plant breeding. Without the use of markers, breeders would decide which individuals to cross based on their phenotype. However, phenotypes are influenced by both genetic and environmental factors. Future challenges for marker-assisted selection would be to improve cost efficiency, optimization, simplification of methods and future innovation, design of efficient and effective marker-assisted selection strategies, greater integration between molecular genetics and plant breathing. Marker assisted selection has become a potent tool for improvement of crop varieties and help the conventional breathing methods to shorten the time required and increase the effectiveness of producing varieties with desirable characters and further minimize costs involved.